the church say amen. Let the church say amen. For God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Wow. Ain't God good? He's good. I remember growing up in Exuma. And this young man, how old are you? 13. 13 years old. One year older than I was. Uh, I accepted the Lord as my Lord and personal Savior at 12. And growing up on the island, we had this thing called program. You don't remember on the island, you go to the program or it, many, they call it program on the island. I guess they call it concert in Nassau, but it was program on the island. And brought her on and and my friend, Brother Nan, <laughs> remind me of that. And speaking about young men, uh, the life of David. Remember David, right? Samuel anointed David when he was 12, 11, 12, in that area. Pastor Gil, right? Okay. So when, when he went to, to Jesse with all those boys, he was delegated to be a shepherd. I don't want you all to think. David chose to be a shepherd. So when you see young people stepping out, you got to bring them along. Yeah. And that's what I see, see here this evening. Oh, but that is my message, too. Okay, that's part of it. Okay. A relationship with a dependable shepherd who leads, provides, and who is all sufficient. So my text is, we already read it, Psalm 23. Hence, the, the, the title of my message is The Dependable Shepherd. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father and God, we just like to thank you for this moment in time. For you know from the, before the foundation of the world, this little black boy from Morstown Eczema would be stand up in front of these folks here at the Bundle Life Bible Church. It's your preordained plan that it would happen this way but Lord, use the words that I speak this evening 
to be some sort of encouragement to, to hear us. Have your way and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The story of David reveals God's amazing grace and sovereignty. Like Jesus Christ, David was a stone that the builders rejected. That's Psalms 118, verse 22. And in Luke, as Jesus was, David was chosen by God to do great things. Jesus was step set aside. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. So him and David had something in common. Jesse's sons, because they were the older ones, they decided, hey, look, we ain't going to keep no sheep, so we can show it on a young fellow. Like I said, David did not choose to be a shepherd. It was trust upon him. So, like I said about the, the, the young people coming up, David did his job. He took his job seriously, and he learned some things on the way coming up. All right? Psalm 23 was written around 1044 BC, and that would make David age somewhere around 34 to 36. Now, you know, at 30, at 30 years old, David became king. So he had a little time to, to catch himself and all that kind of stuff. But at, at 34 and 36, that's very young. So therefore, you see where if you catch the child at a very young age, good things can happen. Now, when you read about David, the first thing you will say in your mind, David was a bad man. Nothing good come out of David, but you don't forget. David, Jesus came from the line of David. So whatever happened in David's life, and you wrote him off to say that he was a murderer, he was adulterous, he did this, he did that, he sinned. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Okay? To know and to speak of a leader, one must establish a relationship with the leader that he can be trusted and can deliver. There are some that want to be leaders. However, many are not able to provide all that we need. A dependable shepherd will lead us. Every five years, lately, as you notice, every five years, we elect a leader to provide for our nation. Did any of them were able to meet all the needs of our people or can be fully trusted? Firstly, I'd like to know, firstly, in order to know the shepherd, you must have a personal relationship with him. So my, 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 my whole message is going to be on relationship, leading by the, by, by the, by the shepherd, and his, his ability to provide for what we need. Write this down in your brain, or just remember this. Relationship always equals benefit. If there's no benefit in a relationship, that relationship will always fail. So there is benefits in relationships. Let's take note of how selfish it sounds, but it's a personal thing. Watch the my, I, and me in Psalm 23. Okay? It states here, a Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd. Pick up on the, on, the, on the my, I, me, and mine. Sounds selfish, you know, but that's a personal thing. It's a relational thing. I only can claim this because we have a relationship. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's very personal. He make it me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and shadow of death, I will fare no evil, for thou art with me. Poisonous, very poisonous. Thy rod and thy staff, thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we see the personal relationship here. You go down the whole psalm, it tells you all the I, me, mine, that kind of stuff. So it shows that you have to make, have a personal relationship to benefit from all these, these verses. Each verse, verse here tells you something that, is, that you could benefit from. All right, you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a benefit. The want means that he will supply what you need. He restored my soul. That's a benefit. Restoration. He brings restoration to all of us when we need restoration. And you know, restoration is a tricky thing because if you, if you work hard or you did something wrong or whatever it is, you need to be revived. Restoration, you can look at it as being forgiven. So in each one of these verses, you could find something here to hold on to. So the question here is, do we have or do you have a personal relationship with the Ben Little Shepherd? Now, I have something to say about this, this psalm also. If you, you ever went to somebody's house and the Bible is open to Psalm 23 or you see it on the dashboard of somebody's car, it's open to Psalm 23, everybody just use Psalm 23 for their own purpose. I don't know, because it sounds good. But if you really understand what the psalm is saying, it says, it's saying this, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ to own this Psalm 23. You cannot say the Lord is your shepherd and you don't follow his leading. You can't say the Lord is your shepherd. Uh, I look at the church and the church is empty. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, if you're following the leading of the, holy, uh, of, the, of the shepherd, there's some things you do. You don't have envy in your heart. You forgive people if you're following, okay? So that is one of the things that you have to realize, you know, this psalm is not an all-inclusive psalm. This is not for the world. If, if you're not saved, it does not apply to you whatsoever. So let us always try to have this personal relationship with God so we could, for the shepherd, so to speak, so you can have the blessings that is within this psalm. Secondly, the dependable shepherd leads I, tr I take trust, it takes trust to follow us, especially sheep. You know sheep, or anybody ever dealt with sheep before? They're the most stubbornness, and they, 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 they call sheep dumb, right? I was born in Morristown, it was the way I lived, and on and off with my grandparents. I had a task to keep the sheep. I didn't know at that time that I was practicing being a shepherd, but I just knew I was carrying the sheep out to feed them. I used to walk like five miles in the morning, put them in the, in the pasture. And after school, I'll go back and get them. But what I realized, what David was saying in this thing here, in, the, in Psalm 23, all this experience that he has, he's attributed this to God, so to speak. He said, everything here is what he learned as a shepherd boy. And so he said, if he could take care of sheep, the way he took care of the sheep, what more could God do? That's why he called him, the Lord is my shepherd. So therefore, if you, if you get to really understand what a sheep does, a sheep will only listen to the voice of the leader, of the shepherd. I remember going up in Exuma, um, I would walk down the long road heading from one point to the next, and don't care who called, come, come, come. You see, the, we call sheep, we say, okay, come. They, that's all, I don't know how everybody else call it, but we say, come. And as soon as we open our mouth and say, come, they just run to you, and they gather around you. So the shepherd, the, sh the shepherd has this, this thing about when he leads the sheep, they listen, and they listen now for one voice, okay? So when, when, when the sheep goes astray, all the shepherds say, come, come and the sheep began to come back and return, okay? In John chapter four, chapter 10, verse four, it says this. When he has brought out all his own, 
He goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. That's a picture. In other words, when you accept the Lord as your personal savior, he goes out all out to lead you. Do you listen to his voice? And if you do, then it's a good thing to follow. He wouldn't lead you astray. It says in John 10, 27, my sheep know my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. You see here, the dependable shepherd leads us if he would only follow. The sad thing is this. It says in Matthew 7, 20, 21 and 23 to 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of the Father in heaven, many will say to me that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This tells me that even in our, in, in our setting as Christians, that some sheep that is following may not have a relationship with the leader, nor listen to his voice, nor hear his words. They have, what we call them, we have them in sheep, we call them sheep in wolf's clothing. They will be revealed. So follow the shepherd's leading. The question here, do you willingly allow the dependable shepherd to lead and you follow. And thirdly, now that we've seen the personal relationship and how the dependable shepherd leads, we now can focus. We now can focus on the dependable shepherd's ability to provide our needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Most of us latch on to the the want, you know, people that's like the want part of this thing. The whole, 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 whole um, 23rd Psalm, we're looking for something what we can get. So we like the want and we like the protection, right? Most of us latch on to the want, but let us not get carried away with the want. It is said in, in Psalms chapter 37, verse 3, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It is a lesson here we tend to worry. It's a lesson here. We tend to worry about what God has already made way for us. You ever think about it? We wake ourselves to the bones. We go to wake, and we hardly have time to come to do nothing. We come to church, and we only come because we want to be a number, so to speak. But we wake ourselves day and night, long hours, to the point of sacrificing our family, our Christian witness, because we want this and we want that. Don't have time to fellowship. Don't get involved in ministry or even corporate prayer. This is evident in our church attendance, as I said. It, is also, it also says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as he see the day approaching. It, is all, it also says in Matthew chapter 6, 30, 31 to 33, therefore take no thought, saying what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed. For all these things do the, do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you ever sit down, if you ever hear people quote that, that scripture, that voice, what does Norman say? If you, if you start the script, the, the verse, you know what I'm saying? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, if you say it right over your head, how, how would you say it? You would say it like this. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things. We, you know, hardly hear people say all these things. You know, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. We know always, anybody who, who, who just sit on top of the head, they normally miss out the all in it. They miss out these things. The these is very important here in this, in this verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what are the things that he said that would be added unto you? He, the, the things that he is, is needed is your, your clothing, I mean your food, your drink, and your clothing. So when we wake ourselves to the bones trying to get that car, a car like Brother Ron's car, they want one. I see Brother Ron get a nice car, so I want that too. So I got to wake a little, a little harder to get this to, to, so I could be in line with Brother Ron. So we, we, we let our eyes cause us to, to miss the mark. Seek the things of the Lord. Seek him first. Put him first and watch him work it out for you. There's nothing wrong with the cars. There's nothing wrong with having all that you need and more. But are you going after that more than you going after Christ? The whole, the whole thing here is we must put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to provide for our need. When you hear pastors or anyone tell you, you're going to get everything that you pray for. That's a life in the pit of hell. You remember the message Pastor, had, Pastor Cranston had a couple of weeks ago? Ask anything in my name and you shall have it. It doesn't really work out all the time. Like he said, you would only get that which you could handle. If you give you everything that you need, like you say, you probably don't want to go to work no more. You sit home and just get fat. But it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And 34 says this, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But just a thought here. Did you notice as we started out at the beginning of the psalm, the psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now what David did here was he bring the pressing needs of people right to the get-go. We all need something. We all want something. But like I say, watch the want. So he, can, he addresses those things right up front to say, you can have these things because the Lord is your shepherd. If you put your faith and trust in God and believe that he is able to do all things, he will provide all that you need. Okay. We see that he is the perfect leader. We're talking about the shepherd now. We see that he is the perfect leader and that he will provide. What we have heard here is this confidence didn't happen overnight. What I call is, this is what I call a reflection or testimony of David's life. You see, when, we, when, when he went through life and found God to be dependable, he found God to be a dependable shepherd. He learned that, that, that he can trust his leadership. He learned that God will never leave him nor forsake him. When he failed him in the darkest time, he learned that he will provide for his needs. He learned that he will protect and that he will, and he learned that he is a God that comforts. When everything is falling apart and he learned that he restores because he can trust the dependable shepherd. What a God. So, it ain't long. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, do you have this dependable shepherd as your shepherd? You need to trust that he will be able to meet your need. We just have to let him lead and follow to experience, in our, to have this experience in our Christian journey, that he is certainly a dependable shepherd. Let us recap. 
we see that we need a personal relationship with God. It has to be personal relationship. Remember, a relationship without benefits is not a relationship. We see that he wants to lead us, listen to, follow his leading. If he follows his leading, all the benefits that is in Psalm 23, we could claim those. We see he can meet our needs, and he certainly met our needs over and over again. Let's not wake ourselves to the bone that we get so tied up in trying to make the funds that we miss out on God's ability to provide for our needs. And I end with this. This like it's a recap of the whole thing. This is the whole 20th side. The Lord is my shepherd. That equals relationship. I shall not want that supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restored my soul. That's healing. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. That's guidance. For his name's sake. That's purpose, sorry. That's purpose. Yea, do I walk through the valley and shadow of death. That's testing. I will fare no evil. That's protection. For thou art with me. That's his faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's hope. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's consecration. My cup runneth over. That's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, that's security, forever, and that's eternity. I pray that this was encouraging to you. I had to dig up. I don't I know how Pastor them is deal with it, but studying this thing ain't easy. I have, I have much respect for pastors now. Uh, sitting down on the Pastor Cranston in homiletics, I did many, many things that so kill most people. But human ethics nearly killed me. You know, I, 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 really, I really take my hats off to the pastors who, who come up here each day, each Sunday, and try to prepare a lesson, a message for us. It, it takes time and time and time again. I told Pastor, Pastor David just now, I say, how, how do you stop yourself from going? Because every time you look, you want to change the introduction, then you want to change this, then you want to change that. And so therefore, I am very happy to know that we have pastors that put time in because you could, you could understand, you could see that they put time into this word. So it was my pleasure trying to bring this word to you, and I hope it was some kind of blessing to you guys. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father and God, we just like to thank you for this moment in time. We know, Lord, that your word, each and every thought, tittle, whatever, is your word. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your word would do that which it was sent out to do, and that is to encourage the saints. For we know that this Psalm 23 belongs to us as believers. Help us, Lord, to depend on you. Help us to build a relationship with you. And help us to know, Lord, that you are God that can provide for our needs. We thank you for this moment again. Jesus, in my pray. Amen. Oh, me sing it. <laughs> Let's sing the song anyway. I, 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 I can do it for you. Bind us together. One of, one of, one of the things that, that I always strive to do is, is be a, a, a person in order to, to reach out to people. We got to get more into that. The, the pandemic is over, so now we need to get closer together because if you notice how things fall apart too easy, we see one person here today, they're gone tomorrow, we see we, people 
die and all that kind of stuff. We got to share the love. You know, we got to share the love.